And MIDI is for a musical instrument digital interface. And in practice, MIDI tracks usually contain digital instruments, such as this drum, drum kit here. MIDI track can also send out MIDI to external devices, such as synthesizers. And it's very easy to play these instruments in Ableton Live. And let's try that. To, to play an instrument, you can use a musical keyboard, if you have it, the one with musical keys. Or you can actually use your computer keyboard to do it. And there's two things you have to activate to do that. This symbol here. This will activate your computer keyboard as a device that you can use to input musical information into Live. And to select what track you're going to play, this symbol right here is the button that arms the track for playing. Okay, so let's try it. I have enabled my computer keyboard and I've enabled this track, so let's try. I'm actually, I'm hitting the key A on my computer keyboard and I'll play some other keys as well. Okay, so it's working. If you're not getting any sound, you're probably playing the wrong key. That's not actually a key that doesn't contain any sound in this instrument. And there's two things to you got to be aware of when you're using your computer keyboard. And when you hit the keys Z and X on your keyboard, at the bottom of the screen, you can actually see that you're getting information on what octave your computer keyboard is currently covering. And computer keyboard covers one octave and one note above that roughly. So when you're trying to play this instrument, you have to set your computer keyboard to C1 because the person who created this instrument has made a decision that sounds in this instrument start from C1 and rise from there chromatically. So it's C1 and above that, the other sounds can be heard. Another thing relating to using your computer keyboard, let's try playing this instrument here, sidechain pad. Okay, so one other thing is how loud your computer, computer keyboard will be inputting data. When you hit C and V, you're getting this info. It's telling you something about velocity. And in practice, velocity means how loud you're playing it. So let me play one note and set or mess with the velocity. Okay, so this instrument can read velocity and the, the higher the velocity for your computer keyboard, the louder the sound. Not every instrument can make use of velocity and that's also user definable in many instruments. So because computer keyboard cannot actually sense how hard you're hitting it. So this is a nice feature in terms of how loud you want to play it. Let's try and create some music. Let me play scene four first. And I think I could do a bass line. And I know that track four has a bass line instrument. So I will enable it for playback. This is called arming a track. And let me just try out something. Okay, that might work. Let me just, before I record it, let me try just chiming it out. I won't record it, I'll just play it. And here we go. I'm using the space bar on my keyboard a lot just to start and stop in case you're wondering. I think that's a really quick way. So if I want to record the bass line, there are two ways. One way is just to click on this little round thing here and that will give me a new clip and record whatever I'll do into the clip. And one little tip relating to this. 
If you want a pre-count, which means that it will not record immediately, you can get it here. Count in one bar. This means that when I activate recording, it'll count it for you like this. So you can you get a little time to prepare. So let's just get rocking. I'll click here and I'll play the bass line and we'll see how I'll do. One, two, three, four. And I hit spacebar to stop recording. I'll give this a color to know that, hey, this is my bass line. I'll double click on the clip and here I see the notes. I'll click on this bar here to give this clip a little more uh, room. And clicking here and dragging left and right allows you to zoom in a little bit. And, and here I'm seeing the notes. My clip lasts four bars. There's one, two, three, four. So this clip is four bars long. And now let's see the other method of recording. And that is if I already have a clip and I want to record into an existing clip. So here I could, if I wanted to, I could delete all the notes. I hit command A or select the time and backspace will delete the notes. And if I want to record into an existing clip, which I already have, this it's the orange one here. This symbol here will activate recording into an existing clip. And a little reminder here, if you ever end up forgetting what these little symbols are, you will get the help view from shift and question mark. And the the field in bottom left will give you info on this symbol, such as this one, which is session record button. Okay, so let's get recording into the clip now. And before I do that, here's a little quick pro tip. I go to preferences, which you can find here, or on Mac, it's a command and comma. So recording, tab record warp launch, and here, you have start playback with record. If you set, the, set it to off, it means that you can enable recording and it does not start the playback. And me, I'm a huge fan of this feature because I need some time to prepare. So definitely keep this in mind. When I enable recording, this is session record button, which means that this symbol activates recording in session. In case you're wondering, this, this traditional looking record button, this is for recording into arrangement. And we will take a look at that later. But now let's record into this clip. So this, is, this symbol has been enabled and I will click on this clip and this track is armed for playback. I'll click on this clip and I have um, Pre-count enabled, so I got one bar, and there we go. One, two, three, four. I think I did pretty okay there. And let me show you a very nice feature about Ableton Live, which is the capture feature. Let me click on this clip slot here. There's no clip. Let me just... I'll try to jam out the clip without any tempo or uh, without the song playing. And then once I nail it, I can actually make a clip out of it. So let me try. If I feel that, okay, that was pretty nice. This button here is capture and let me click on it. Okay, so you see that this is the one. I got a clip that actually captured the bass line that I played and it created a clip out of that. My tempo got a little faster because I played it, I played it without a metronome. And I played it a little faster than my song. 
I can easily take the song tempo down and song tempo is here. So the tempo was 100, so I can just click and drag down or I can click and use my computer keyboard to take it down or I can enter the value 100. And this is my original tempo. I can see and hear that it's not perfect. So there are two ways to correct this. So I'm done with this. So let me take the play start marker for the clip as well as the loop brace back to one. So this is where the loop will start, clip will start and it'll loop the whole section. Okay, so this was one way of correcting the MIDI notes. This was manual. Let's play some beats because after playing some beats, I usually need even more correcting. Let's go to track one. Let's close this bar here. Let's make some more scenes because I'm going to need some more space. I just, I like a spacious layout. So insert scene or command I will give you more scenes. And I want to solo the drum track and I just want to play in a drum clip. Oh, and a good idea might be to save your song at this point if you're feeling it. So save live set or command S and save it to, I could save it to desktop and give it a name, new song. There it is. I'll explain to you about the file structure a little later, but now save your song if you want to. Okay, so let's go and make some beats and see how Ableton Live can help you get your MIDI notes tight and correctly. I will do a new MIDI clip here. I'll double click and I'll get a new clip in the slot. And I will make the clip one bar long. I see the length here. This is bars. So one bar is exactly what I need. So one concept that we have to understand is the musical grid, because when we correct our MIDI notes, Ableton Live has to know how it's going to correct them. So let me explain the musical grid and its function to you. I have a clip that's one bar long and at the bottom right, you will see a number, one sixteenth. What does this mean? Well, let me do a fairly fast hi-hat. I'll double click to create a new MIDI note. I could activate this symbol here so I can hear what I'm doing. By the way, I can duplicate notes if I select them and I hit Command D for duplicate. Okay, and this is my new clip. <clears throat> so that's not the hi-hat sound that I'm after. So I'll just select the notes and by using arrow keys, I can just move it or I can just grab it and push it into its place. Maybe that is, this is the one, okay. So you can see that, of course, the MIDI note has a certain length. And what is the factor that determines the length? Let me delete these notes. Well, this number here is the grid resolution. Like this means how many parts one bar has been divided into. So now you can see the grid here. On a Mac, you can set the grid resolution to tighter or looser by hitting Command 1 and Command 2. You can see the number change here. So yeah, technically this means how many parts the bar or the, the grid in this one bar has been divided into. So as you can see, if I make the grid bigger and I create the MIDI note, I'll get bigger MIDI notes. And this hi-hat would sound like, that could be doable actually, but I want a faster hi-hat, 16th notes. So, it's good to understand the grid because grid determines many things. 
especially the placement of your MIDI notes and correcting the MIDI notes. Because let's say I want to play, try and play this type of hi-hat manually. And let me see if I have my correction record quantization on. I'll make it off and let's see what happens. I will explain quantization very soon. So I have soloed the track and activate metronome. Let me practice first. Okay, let me just rock it. Okay, my playing was terrible to say the least. I will not redo it because <clears throat> I could. Well, let me delete it. I sucked, but if I want to use quantization while recording, that means that while I am recording, Ableton Live will know where the MIDI notes should fall. So let's go to record quantization and go for 16th note quantization because as I showed you 16th notes the bar divided into 16 little parts is what I want for this hi-hat I showed you how this sounded the way I want okay so now I have enabled record quantization so let me activate recording into a clip here and let me record it okay now I go Yo, my playing wasn't very tight, but this feature called record quantization made it tight because what it did is, let's say that my MIDI note falls somewhere around here, like in terms of this grid line. Let's say my MIDI note falls here when I'm playing, record quantization will force the MIDI note to the closest grid line, which is the 16th node grid line. So that is why I get a perfect hi-hat. Another way to correct your MIDI notes and get them tight would be quantization after recording. So let me delete these notes and I want to play them manually once again. By the way, if you want to disable the grid, command four is that. Command three will give, give you a triplet grid. I will play the hi-hats in by hand and let me disable record quantization because I want to, I want it to go fairly loose once again. So let's do this one more time and I tried. What I just showed you before this was quantization while recording. Let me show you quantization after recording. Okay, so my hi-hat is going to need some help. I want to quantize these MIDI notes. Quantization is the process of nudging these MIDI notes to or towards the MIDI grid. Shift command U on a Mac or quantize, quantize settings will give us this screen. Now let's see these few parameters here. Quantize two. Like I said, quantization pushes the nodes to or towards the grid. So this is the grid that Ableton Live will take into account. So 16th notes is exactly what I want because this, this hi-hat plays 16 times in one bar. So should it adjust start or the end of the MIDI note will start because then it'll move it where I want it to go. And let's see how amount operates. If I set it to 100 and click OK, see what happens. Perfect. It'll snap directly to the grid line. Let me undo this. Let me go back to Quantize Settings by hitting Shift Command U. What I do often, especially with slower tempos that can benefit from some looseness, I often set this amount to something fairly small and then I quantize this many, many times. So Command U is quantizing. So let me just hit Command U a few times. I could actually let it play and listen to it 
maybe with the metronome on and let me quantize it a few times. You know, this could work depending on the beat I want to do, because I always say electronic music doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes electronic music is too perfect, like technically perfect. So some looseness can be pretty good. I could now record the kicks in. Let's do that. I will enable clip recording here and I will play the clip and I have no record quantization on. So let's rock. Snares, I'm gonna need snares. My second snare especially is a little late and the first one happens a little early. So I can quantize them. You don't always have to quantize everything. If I click on this note, it'll se select the snares or I could select them manually. And now let me do the quantization again. I'll, I'll hit command U a few times to quantize just the snare. Yes. All right, that uh, seems good. Well, it sounds pretty good to me. Okay, let's see about some MIDI note editing basics. Let's see about these hi-hats here. If for any reason I wanted to fill the gaps here, there's a nice feature called Legato. If I click on Legato, the gaps will just disappear. So this will stretch the MIDI notes so that one MIDI note will last till the next one. You can, of course, you can stretch the MIDI notes like this if you want to. And this has to do with the grid as well. So if I disable the grid, it'll be smooth. And if I have the grid on, let's say I have a really big grid, it'll go in steps like this if I create a new MIDI note and so let's say I want to make these hi-hats faster like double this double speed the sun nice feature here this button right here that will basically take the MIDI notes and squeeze them into a smaller space you see that I can select certain MIDI notes when I click on the key here. You see that this gets selected and you get this handle here. I could grab this handle here and force these into a certain space if I want to do that. Let me just keep these like this and Command D will duplicate the selected MIDI notes. You can move the selected nodes with arrow keys on your on your computer keyboard. And velocity is seen here at the bottom. Velocity basically means how loud the note is playing. In most instruments, velocity controls the playback level of the sound. Let me click on the hi-hat notes here and you see now bottom here, if I click on this node, and drag it down, all the selected MIDI notes will get quieter. A nice little tip is selecting some notes like the hi-hats. And on the velocity field here, I hit command, click, and do a line like this. Hey, see that? Let me just make the hi-hat slower. I think it's going too fast, so I just uh, select the notes, double, nice and slow. Let me go to this clip. This was for my bass instrument on this track, so I'll solo the bass instrument track. One nice feature is invert. So I select these notes and click invert and Ta -da. So it'll flip it upside down. For some melodic variation, this is nice. 
and reverse just flips it, creates like a mirror image. Yo.